am passionate about figure skating. So I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking she must be pretty good, right? Maybe a few medals, a couple of Olympic team stories. Sorry to let you down, but I actually just started taking beginner lessons last year, and most of my classmates still get dropped off at the rink by their parents. <laughs> and for now, my skates stay firmly on the ice. The idea of throwing myself into the air with blades attached to my feet doesn't quite sit with me yet. So now I'm wondering, knowing all of this, would you still say that I am passionate about figure skating? Could I possibly be passionate about something that I have yet to master? This word passion, we've placed an unreasonable amount of pressure around this word. And we bought into the false belief that passion requires expertise and skill. When actually, the essence and meaning of the word passion is something quite different. Passion is simply an intense desire or enthusiasm for something. And yet we've taken this word and we've qualified it in our minds as having only to do with experts. And we're afraid and we shy away from it as a result of that. And there's a reason for this. When we look at our sources of inspiration, they all share something in common. All of these inspirational people that we look towards have made careers out of their passions. Whether it's athletes, celebrities, entrepreneurs, and scientists. And we look at these people with awe instead of praising the beginner. And so we apply a similar thought process to our own lives, and it looks a little bit like this. We start with our intention. I want to find my passion. And since we're practical and we want it to fit into our lives, we find a space for it. And a lot of the time, it comes in the form of a job. Because our, su our successful, inspirational role models have followed that path. But if you're like the 80% of an unhappy employees worldwide, eventually you're going to say, I'm unhappy, this is not my passion, I don't like this job, and we think another job is going to make us happier. And so we rinse and we repeat, only to find ourselves stuck in this perpetual cycle. And we don't stop to think if our passions may not exist within this circle at all. But your career doesn't have to be your passion, and your passion doesn't have to be your career. And yet, we force all of our effort and attention into one small circle of what we think we can do and what we think we know, and we ignore the rest. And when we do this, we miss out. We miss out on all of the amazing experiences that we have yet to try, and we just focus on what we think we can't do. But there is a better way to think about our desire for passion in our lives. We have to be lifelong learners, and we have to be beginners. I learned this very early in my life. I spent my entire childhood with the title, New Girl. Between the ages of 7 and 18, I attended 11 different schools all across the US. And no, I was not a military child, so I didn't even have a good reason for it. And so I didn't like it, obviously, as a child. I hated leaving friends and familiar places behind. But reflecting back on my childhood as an adult, I see that it is one of my favorite parts of who I am. It has literally shaped who I am today and cultivated my love for lifelong learning. With every move, I learned to embrace change and new experiences as a natural part of my life. And my tolerance to change improved with practice and repetition. Sometimes you just need to see things with new eyes you just need a change, and it doesn't have to be a career-altering decision. So don't start calculating outcomes before you've even begun. Just build up the confidence to begin. A few years ago, I took up an interest in the complex world of wine. Yes, drinking wine. <laughs> but also learning about the history and process of making it too. And my reason for this is very simple. I just wanted to stop feeling intimidated by the big wine lists at restaurants during client dinners. We've all had that. <laughs> and so when I travel to wineries, I take a pretty serious looking camera with me and a little notebook. And while everyone in the room is tasting, I'm busy scribbling down notes and asking questions. And because of this, I'm invited into barrel rooms and private tastings with winemakers, all things that should call us cost a small fortune. 
because of what this $10 notebook represents to these passionate experts. $10. <laughs> and their passion is contagious. The more I learn about their craft, the more invested I become. And as someone who loves to read and study, I purchased every formal textbook that I could find online, and I hope to take the exam someday. This taught me that taking the position of a learner opens up your world to so many experiences beyond what we think of ourselves. So often when we think of ourselves, we've already told ourselves that it is not like us. Before we try something new, that it is unlike what we can do and what we've already tried, and so we don't. I have friends in their 20s tell me that they're too old to get into a new field of work or pursue a passion. And the ironic thing is, yes, they're in their 20s, but they're also some of the most brilliant, inspiring, and encouraging individuals that I know. So I encourage them, and I remind them of their full selves as I encourage myself and you to continue to try new things, to dive into new experiences, because it is there and open up, up your world to new things that you become more like yourself. Choose the life of a lifelong learner. Be a beginner, and you'll find new passions, whether you like jumping on the ice with blades on your feet or not.